Clash Royale spells have come a long way since the early days. Can you imagine Goblin Barrel costing 4 elixir and dealing area damage? Or remember the old heal spell, able to bring your entire push back to full health. Yeah, compared to today's little guy, that was a game changer. This is the old versus the new Clash Royale spells. Zap worked very differently in the early stages of the game. It didn't have a stun effect, which meant you couldn't reset the Inferno Tower's damage output, and this lack of a stun made it hard to fit Zap into many deck archetypes. Golem Beatdown decks, for example, preferred spells like Fireball and Arrows to deal with the Inferno Tower more effectively. Realizing this, Supercell introduced a balance update in March of 2016. They added a 1 second stun to Zap, double the current stun time of 0.5 seconds, and this change completely shifted the Zap's role in the game. Now it could reset the Inferno Tower and that 1 second stun time often meant getting a little extra hit on the tower or dealing with enemy troops more easily. With this update, players quickly realized how powerful Zap was. It skyrocketed to becoming the number one spell in Clash Royale, surpassing arrows and reaching an insane 98% usage rate in competitive play. And you bet there were a few reasons for this. Number one, higher damage. Zap dealt enough damage to eliminate regular goblins and counter goblin barrel, making the barrel nearly useless in 2016. Stronger tower damage. So back then, Zap dealt 50% damage to towers compared to today's 30%. It hit towers as hard as arrows do now. And finally, number three, they were effective against the Minion Horde. You could easily zap the Minion Horde and follow it up with a Spear Goblin for a clean defense. Fireball used to have 80% more knockback than it does today. This made it a great counter to a wide range of cards, pushing troops further apart and buying you just that extra second to deal with them. On the downside, certain troops couldn't be pushed back at all. For example, the balloon couldn't be pushed, which made it harder to deal with. The same went with the baby dragon, making air units tougher to handle with fireball due to the lack of a pushback. Interestingly, there were troops that you could push back then that you can't now, like the dark Prince. Definitely a game changer. To top it off, Fireball used to deal 50% damage to towers, meaning it hit harder than Lightning does today. And while Fireball had its pros and cons, what I really loved was its old card art. It had an amazingly unique look, almost like a burning sun. It reminded me a lot of Solston's Comet from Avatar. Poison broke the game back in 2016. And here's why. Poison is one of the best supporting cards in the game. Not only does it slow down the attack speed and movement of enemy units, it also erodes at their health, making your opponent's counter push much less effective, and your push even stronger. Does super well against spawners because poison will slow down the building spawn rate, damage the spawned troops, damage the spawner, and the crown tower. The fact that poison slowed down both troops and buildings had a huge impact. This led to the rise of Goizen Meta, a deadly combination of giant poison and elixir collector. Since the elixir collector only cost 5 elixir at the time, this deck was nearly unstoppable. Supercell luckily quickly realized how broken this combo was, so they removed poison's slowing effect in a later balance update. And with that, poison's usage rate dropped from a whopping 60% down to 2%. People thought Poison was dead, but I believe that was a bit of an overreaction. It never truly died. Fun fact, in the Chinese version of the game, Poison is called Damage Potion and appears green. I couldn't exactly find out why, so if anyone knows, drop a comment. It's honestly kind of perplexing. And speaking of comments, I'm giving away 100 bucks to one lucky winner. To enter, just subscribe and let me know in the comments which spell you think deserves the next evolution. Good luck. Now, let's dive into Arrows. So Arrows used to be a pretty underwhelming spell, especially because of its slow projectile speed. However, they were extremely popular in 2016 thanks to the princess who was in almost every deck once players unlocked her. Back then, Arrows had a projectile speed of 600 compared to today's 1100, and that's 45% faster. This slower speed made it difficult to use Arrows effectively. If you played them on defense, they were fine, but if you were trying to use them offensively, it felt like they took forever to land, which is why many players preferred Zap over Arrows. Getting out of here, and let's start our, our goblins. Uh, oh no, Arrows, we gotta get our Arrows down. Come on, come on, come on, gosh, those Arrows took way too long. Oh my goodness. 
Another difference was that arrows used to shoot just one volley, unlike the three volleys they fired today. This made them less effective against certain troops. For example, with just one volley, you couldn't wipe out the skeletons from a tombstone, which could be the difference between winning and losing. Arrows were also particularly useless against Graveyard back then, but after the update that added the three volleys, they became a much better counter to waves of skeletons. In 2017, they struggled even more. They couldn't handle the Night Witch or the four pats that she spawned, making them feel pretty weak in the meta. And to make things worse, they didn't deal enough damage to wipe out archers or wall breakers. Thankfully, Supercell eventually buffed arrows, and now they're one of the best spells in the game. However, there's one big difference from the past. They used to deal twice as much damage to Crown Towers. Today, they deal only 25%, but back then, they hit for 50%. If arrows still had that 50% Crown Tower damage, they'd deal as much damage as poison. But despite the reduced damage to towers, what really matters is troop value, which is why arrows used to be one of the worst spells until 2019, when they started shooting three volleys. Rocket has been one of the most hated and loved spells in Clash Royale. Anyone else hate Rocket? Definitely one of the best cards in the game. So what made Rocket so frustrating was its high damage to both troops and princess towers. It used to deal twice the damage to towers at 50% compared to today's 25. If it still had that 50% damage, you could take down a cannon tower in just four rockets. This led to the rise of rocket cycle decks, where players could defend cheaply and just rocket the tower repeatedly to win. Even Surgical Goblin used rocket as a win condition in his log bait deck, winning the 200,000 King's Cup tournament for his team. About to get a bandit shot. Yes, the gambit is good. Two shots for the princess, and that's going to be it, Rummy. A rocket comes out for Surgical Goblin as Surgical Goblin wins game five and the King's Cup two. They're rushing the stage. Team K so it's rushing the stage. Surgical Goblin is bouncing up and down. To add to the frustration, there were also several bugs with Rocket. For example, a mini P.E.K.K.A. wouldn't get wiped out if an Ice Golem was placed nearby. The Ice Golem acted like a shield, absorbing all the Rocket's damage and leaving other troops untouched. A crazy positive elixir trade. This glitch made the Expo players love Rocket. If your opponent had Rocket, you could simply place an Ice Golem next to your Princess Tower and deploy the Expo at the bridge. If they tried to rocket the Expo, only the Ice Golem would get destroyed. Goblin Barrel was nearly worthless throughout 2016, and Log Bait didn't even exist back then. And you might be asking, but why? Well, first, Goblin Barrel cost four Elixir, which made it difficult to cycle. And getting three goblins for just four Elixir, well, it just wasn't worth it. However, there was a twist. Goblin Barrel had area damage. See, it wasn't much, but it could still deal minor damage to the tower to clear skeletons, which, you know, was still helpful. Even with that, though, it wasn't enough to justify that elixir cost. One of the main reasons Goblin Barrel struggled was because Zap could one-shot goblins, making it an easy plus two elixir trade for the opponent. And to make things worse, Fire Spirits used to spawn in groups of three, which was a perfect counter to the Goblin Barrel. If you didn't predict the Fire Spirits with Zap, your opponent would get another positive elixir trade. But over time, things changed. Zap was nerfed, so it no longer one-shot goblins. Goblin Barrel's elixir cost was reduced to three and its area damage was removed. On top of that, fire spirits were reworked to only spawn one, making them less of a counter. Slowly but surely, Goblin Barrel became more popular. The log used to roll 50% slower, making it much harder to use offensively. It seemed to take forever to roll, and by the time it reached its target, cards like Princess had already done their damage. Additionally, the log's rolling distance was much shorter, at 9.6 tiles compared to today's 10.1. Honestly, that half-tile difference might not seem like much, but it could be the deciding factor between hitting a princess or missing her entirely. The log also had a slower casting speed back then, meaning that there was a noticeable delay between deploying it and when it actually started rolling. To make matters worse, the log couldn't affect certain chunky troops like the Prince, Dark Prince, Sparky, Royal Giant, and Giant Skeleton. All these factors made the log pretty underwhelming despite its legendary status. That said, there were some better 
benefits. The log used to deal twice as much damage to crown towers, and its pushback was around 110% stronger, which had its advantages. But overall, it was still considered one of the weaker spells. Fortunately, Supercell buffed nearly every stat, and the log became one of the best spells in the game. Now, with the upcoming evolution mechanic, I'm pretty excited to see what they come up with. There are a few concepts floating around YouTube, maybe it could split into two logs, blow up, or even mirror itself on both sides of the arena like the Goblin Barrel evolution. I'm really looking forward to what Supercell comes up with. Let me know what you guys think would be a cool Evo idea for the log in the comments. Graveyard used to be even more annoying than it is today. For starters, it had a 20% bigger radius, skeleton spawned after 1.5 seconds compared to 2.5 today, and its duration was 10 seconds instead of the current 9. The most frustrating part was how random the skeleton spawns were. It basically took no skill. All you had to do was drop the spell and wait for the damage to pile up. Simple as that. But there was a drawback. That huge 5-tile radius compared to today's 4 made it much riskier to accidentally activate the opponent's king tower. You had to be more precise with your placements, although most of the time it didn't even matter. As long as you just had a tank in front and dropped the graveyard, that tower was likely coming down in just one push. I'm not gonna lie, I've never been a fan of this spell. It kinda always felt like it took the skill out of gameplay, especially when those random skeleton hits seemed so unfair. And maybe it's just me, though. Oh, and uh, please, please, Clash Royale devs, if you are watching this video, do not give this card an evolution. Lightning used to be in a weird spot, kind of like Zap. When it first launched, it didn't have the stun ability, so it couldn't reset Inferno Tower, which made it less useful. Players didn't see much value in it because of that. However, Lightning had some sneaky advantages. Back then, there was no visual effect if it didn't hit anything, so you could secretly cycle your Lightning without your opponent realizing. Though, you know, it was risky. And like other spells back then, Lightning had a 50% Crown Tower damage compared to 30% today. Early Clash Royale was all about spells dealing massive damage to towers. Eventually, Supercell realized that this wasn't balanced, especially when there were decks that could win or even three crown just by using spells. Slowly but surely, spells got nerfed, which was definitely for the best. Freeze used to be a total nightmare. Its duration was twice as long. Eight seconds compared to four seconds today. And you know what? No, sit with me for eight seconds, starting now. Yeah. Just why? Even at level one, it froze for five seconds, and that one second difference alone could make or break a match. Now having a four second advantage, it was just, it was wild. It also had a 33% bigger radius, making it even more broken, but it wasn't all perfect. Freeze didn't deal any damage, so you couldn't chip away at the tower or clear out skellies. Plus, its mechanics were different. For example, if you froze an elixir collector, it wouldn't stop generating elixir, so freezing it was pointless. And if you froze the Inferno Tower, it would freeze, but the damage output wouldn't reset. I even found a clip showing this. The Inferno Tower targets a baby dragon, its damage ramps up, and then Ash freezes it. When the freeze wears off, the Inferno Tower instantly melts a barbarian because its charge was still intact. Crazy stuff. Tornado used to be so much weaker and slower. When it first came out, its pulling power was only 60% of what it is today. Now it pulls at a ridiculous 363%. Plus it had a smaller radius at five tiles, but the pulling duration was almost 200% longer, 3.05 seconds compared to today's 1.05. Because of this long duration, Tornado dealt more ticks of damage, but it took forever to wipe out small troops like skeletons or goblins. However, However, its stronger damage made it possible to clear them out eventually. On the downside, Tornado didn't deal any damage to towers, so finishing off a low health tower could be frustrating. There were pros though, you could pull troops behind the King's Tower without activating it, which was a nice trick. And we can't forget the infamous Executioner plus Tornado combo. That's been around for over 7 years now, but in 2017 it was absolutely broken. Tornado would pull troops forever, giving the Executioner all the time in the world 
to slice them down. Tornado has seen some interesting balance changes, but overall it's in a much healthier place now. As for an evolution idea, I think it would be cool to give Tornado like a, a nausea effect. Troops caught in it would be like frozen in place or stunned for 2-3 to three seconds, looking around and unable to act. Another idea is bringing back the old 3 second duration, but increasing the damage by 3-4 to four times, making it a stronger offensive card as well. I don't know, maybe I'm getting carried away. I'm an old hog ex NATO player. Clone has always been a bit of a meme. It never really broke Clash Royale, but it had its funny moments and glitches. Still, it's mostly used for off-meta decks and just having fun. When Clone first came out, its mechanic was different. Instead of cloning troops behind like today, it cloned them to the side. This often caused cloned troops to get targeted by the second princess tower, making it harder to use effectively. On top of that, it had a 0.8 second cloning time compared to today's 0.5. And that small 0.3 second difference made a big impact, especially in close matches. Competitively, clone is pretty much useless, and the only thing that would save it would be an evolution. Maybe if clone troops healed themselves slowly, it could give the card a much needed spark. The floating spear goblins! He can't defend the floating spear goblins! Let's go! The float! Look at him! Look at the floating spear goblins! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Mirror used to have a completely different vibe. Its card render was black and dark, which made it look way more OP than it is today. But what most players don't know is that in February of 2016, mirrored common cards were four levels higher, and rares were two levels higher. Unfortunately, few players had Mirror maxed out back then, so there's not much footage of this. Mirror is one of the hardest cards to balance. It's either underwhelming or way too strong with no real middle ground. The only time Mirror really broke Clash Royale was in April of 2022 when it got buffed to give cards plus two levels instead of one. Combine that with the buffed Electro Giant and you have the most toxic E-Giant meta ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this deck is broken. In certain matchups especially, this what the heck bro, what the heck. It was an awful time for casual players. To make things worse, there was a glitch with mirrored balloons where you could drop it directly on your opponent's tower. Talk about OP. Be patched. Uh, let's play our balloon. We play the balloon. All right, we play. I don't care. We soak the tower. I don't want to talk about it. We play our snowball. Instantly spawn another balloon. Instantly spawn another balloon, baby. Boom, 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 boom. Since then, Mirror hasn't broken the game on its own again, though it spikes in popularity when certain broken cards come out, like Phoenix in 2022 or Goblin Machine in 2024, but yeah, Mirror's kinda like a meme to me at this point. Barbarian Barrel used to have a rolling distance of seven tiles, meaning it could even hit the King Tower. It could also knock back troops like the Log, but it couldn't push back bulkier troops like Giant or Prince. On the bright side, Barb Barrel could one-shot cards like the Princess or Dart Goblin, basically any, you know, loggable card. However, it cost three elixir, which made it less effective than you'd think for the price. It's debatable whether the larger rolling distance was better or worse. There were moments where you needed it on offense and the large distance actually came in clutch, but on defense, it could sometimes be a downside as the barbarian would jump out later. Giant Snowball was introduced with a 20% bigger area radius compared to today, making it even easier to wipe out troops. On the other hand, it dealt 10% less damage and the slow duration was only two seconds compared to the three of today. Snowball was never too good or too bad of a spell. I think it's in a great spot right now, but it could have a pretty interesting evolution. I think this idea of giving it an evolution where once you use the snowball, it would slow troops down for longer and also slow down every troop and tower on the map. That would definitely be insanely cool and bring some interesting gameplay. So Heal used to be a three elixir rare spell introduced in April of 2017. It was pretty broken in the three must Musketeers deck as you could heal up your 1 HP Musketeers to full health and more. Right, all of this is gonna go down. Here goes the heal spell, healing up the 3 Musketeers. Take a look at that heal, bringing the 3 Musketeers back up to full HP. That was the type of heal spell usage we wanted to use right there. No wonder its usage rate peaked at 27% at the top of the ladder at one point. It was a decent spell, even though it didn't work in every deck archetype, but in some cases, heal could completely shift the outcome of the match, creating some unforgettable 
unforgettable moments. Some players paired heal with Goblin Barrel if their opponent didn't have the log on hand or only had Zap. This was a perfect combo to get a lot of damage on the tower. But even more surprising was the combination with Tornado and Graveyard. Like I explained earlier, Tornado did damage slower so you had more time to heal up your skellies from the graveyard. Similarly, if you wanted to defend, you could use it to heal up Skarmy on defense. It's kind of sad that Supercell had to remove the spell completely as it was either too good or too bad and was really hard to balance. I think a proper rework to 2 Elixir could do the trick and be a great addition to Clash Royale, but we can only hope that the spell makes a comeback one day. Royal Delivery used to have a knockback mechanic, which was absolutely massive. It could disrupt Inferno Dragon, easily push and counter ground troops, and the removal of this mechanic hit a lot of players hard. Knockback was such a massive mechanic that they removed. Stopping a Hog Rider with Royal Delivery and Skeleton is no longer a viable option to get zero damage. However, even after this nerf, it's still a great spell for defense. Fun fact, the Royal Delivery was designed after a concept that involved a bomb. It was originally called Bone Bomb and involved a bomb that would explode after a short time. After the bomb exploded, two guards would spawn from the blast site. Over time, the developers changed it to Royal Delivery and we ended up with what we have today. The old Earthquake spell couldn't damage Tesla when it was underground, but that changed in 2020 because, well, I mean, come on, it doesn't make much sense for the Earthquake not to affect an underground building, right? This change was a big deal, especially for players who relied on buildings like Tesla to stop big pushes. Also, the old Earthquake didn't just slow down movement speed by 35%. It also slowed down attack speed and spawn deployment for troops. But this was later changed, and Earthquake was buffed to slow movement speed by 50%, while the other slowing effects were removed. Additionally, Earthquake used to deal the same damage to crown towers as it did to buildings and troops, but thankfully that got nerfed several times. Now it only deals 65% of its damage to crown towers, so Earthquake cycling is not as effective as it used to be. But even with all of these changes, Earthquake is still a solid spell and is not going anywhere anytime soon. Void's first attack time used to be only 0.5 seconds compared to 1 second today, so you had almost no chance to react to it unless you predicted it. On top of that, it did more single target damage, each hit used to deal 13.2% more damage, and this made it one of the most difficult spells to defend against, especially when facing high damage troops like Sparky or Mother Witch. You could take them down in just one hit, making it an extremely efficient trade. Honestly, I have a love-hate relationship with this spell. It's super fun to play with, but incredibly irritating to play against. Many players still think it's too broken, though it's seen multiple balance changes. Oh wait, it, this is done. It is done. That's so balanced! Dude, what the fuck? Evolved Zap was the first spell to receive an evolution, and oh boy. Was it broken? It was essentially a two elixir fireball because it could take out Magic Archer or Mother Witch with ease. Each hit used to deal the same damage as regular zap, but the radius would increase to 3.5 tiles, the same as poison. So technically evolved zap was like using three zaps in a row for the cost of two elixir. Yeah, you know, totally balanced, right? Thankfully, after Supercell made enough profit from it, they nerfed the zap evolution. Now the second and third zaps only deal 50% of the original damage, so it's fun far from what it used to be. That being said, I'm happy that Zap received the first spell evolution because it was kind of underwhelming for a long time. Now it's back in the spotlight, even though it's no longer the powerhouse it once was. Evolved Goblin Barrel is probably one of the most balanced evolution introductions in Clash Royale history. As of the time of writing this, it hasn't received any balance changes, which is a sign of good design. Fun fact, the card's description says Evolved Goblin Barrel is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get, which is a reference to the movie Forrest Gump. Pretty cool. Before Goblin Curse was released, its damage was reduced by 41.9% and its crown tower damage was reduced by 20% from 30. You can see just how powerful this card was in OJ's video. It literally wiped out skeletons in less than two seconds and turned them into goblins. 
But that's not all. Supercell did not stop there. They also added a damage amplification effect inside the Goblin Curse's radius. Not 20%, not 30%, but 50% more damage to troops caught inside the curse. And to top it off, the radius used to be four tiles, the same as arrows. So for just two elixir, you'd get an army of goblins in a second, while also killing troops twice as fast in a ridiculously big radius. It was honestly insane how overpowered this card was. What I love about Clash Royale is that despite all the pro players saying it was too broken and needed nerfing, Supercell didn't listen to that feedback right away. After months of testing, the card finally got balanced, and now Goblin Curse has a 3-tile radius and a plus 20% damage amplification. While it's definitely more balanced now, I think they nerfed it a bit too hard. The card only has a 1% usage rate and a 35% win rate, which shows it's really underperforming. A small buff like increasing the damage amplification back to 30% or giving it a bit more damage could make it more competitive again. And now the spell I've been dying to talk about and you've been waiting to hear about. Rage. Rage has an epic journey, from its days as a three elixir spell that covered half the arena, to a complete rework that totally changed the game. This spell has a history like no other in Clash Royale, so go ahead and watch this video next, where I dive into the incredible evolution of the Rage spell. See you there.